All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. process um this is just um this is just the overview of the eia process this is just an introduction so yeah so this now i would engage you right away to the eia process so first one or the phase one is the initial inquiries um in which um this is the part that you will understand the proposed activities of the specific study that we will be doing and of course conduct a preliminary assessment if needed um, and then um, our focus uh, by phase one is actually more of the initial requirement, uh, inquiries, initial inquiries. And then after that is the phase two is the full EIA study or the EIS report. However, um, I would like to tell you that not all um, activities or not all outputs needs a full EIA study. That is why, again, um, the screening is very important because there are possibilities that the activity or your certain project that you are doing does not require a full EIA. Maybe it will, it will only require IEE or initial environmental um, examination or it would only require um, project description. So again, that is um, the screening part is very important. However, if in phase two, if the project that uh, you we will be doing would require a full EAA, then this will be the process. So of course, we will do the scoping, the public scoping, uh, evaluate the baseline uh, situation, and then identify and choose alternatives. Um, and then after, identify and characterize um, the potential impacts of the proposed um, activity and each, uh, and each alternative, and then develop mitigation and monitoring. And um, of course, um, communicate and document. If we are going to uh, elaborate on the phase one of the EA process, basically this is the process. So first is you have to understand the proposed activity. Why is the activity being proposed? You have to understand that. And of course, what is being proposed. And then after that, uh, we will screen the activity. So based on the nature of the activity, what level of environmental review is indicated. And then after that, um, activity is, um, is of moderate or maybe a known risk. Um, it depends on the, um, on the screen activity. After that, we will conduct a preliminary assessment. So we will we can actually do a rapid simplified EIA study using simple methods, uh, simple tools like IE, as I said earlier, the initial env uh, environmental examination. Um, if there are um, significant adverse um, impact, impact, significant uh, adverse impacts, uh, possible significant adverse impacts, then we will proceed with uh, we will begin with the full EIA study. However, if after the after um, the preliminary assessment, if um, the significant adverse impacts are very unlikely, then therefore we can stop the EIA process. And then, um, if we stop the EIA process, then we will not proceed with the phase two, or we will not proceed with the full EIA study. In which, as I said earlier, the screening of the activity is very important because we will know if the activity is it would have a low risk or it would have a high risk. So when we say low risk, it means um, 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 there is a very unlikely um, uh, unlikely to have a significant adverse impacts, or if we if there is a high risk. 
um, then it means that there is likely to have a significant adverse impacts. If there is, again, a significant adverse impacts, then therefore, we will proceed with the phase two or the full EIA study. All right. Any questions so far with the AI process? This is just an overview. This is just, you know, an, on the bird's eye view. Do you have any questions so far? Not so far, ma'am. All right. Um, okay. Uh, all right. I proceed. All right. So let's elaborate more on the phase one. Um, understanding the proposed activity. So again, you have to understand the proposed activity. Why is the activity being proposed and what is being proposed? So all AIA processes begin with understanding what is being proposed and why. And the question is, why is the activity being proposed? should be answered with a development objective. So, um, for example, um, you want to build a road and you uh, undergo and you have to um, do the EAA. Of course, you're div you're, uh, it should be answered um, with, you know, building a road. No, it should not be, but it should be increasing access to market. And to that, we must understand that the development objective is to identify environment and environmentally sound alternatives and not just, you know, building the road. But, you know, for example, increasing access to markets or, incre or um, lis um, listening the number of hours of travel, that is, you know, a developmental objective and not, you know, just building the road. So, yeah, so it's like, you know, so what if we are going to build a road? What is the, you know, the, the highest outcome of that in, in building the road? So what if we're going to build the road? So it would be better or it would be um, your EIS report will be accepted by the EMB DNR if you will have a development objective in which an example, increasing access to markets or increasing or decreasing the number of hours of travel. All right. So next is, um, once we understand um, the development objective, we must fully understand what is being proposed. So, of course, this um, includes associated actions. For example, the primary activity is um, the construction of diversion dam and irrigation canal. Of course, the associated activity is survey. Of course, we always do the survey. I know you know that. And then, of course, we have to negotiate land tenure if there are lands that are privately owned, um, construct a uh, borrow pit, um, establish construction camp, construction temporary diversion uh, structure, and dispose of soil or debris. So, um, again, the primary activity is always associated with um, actions or secondary activities uh, in which, again, um, for us to fully understand as to what this the study is about or what are we go, uh, what are we proposing we have to understand also the associated actions and after that of course again the most important part um, in, in, in EIA study or EIS report is screening the activity um, in which this is actually based on the nature of the activity and what level of environmental analysis analysis is being indicated. So again, um, screening is the process of asking the very basic set of questions about the nature of, of activity. So um, these questions like do not require analysis is um, um, not um, applicable. And the, these questions like do not require detailed knowledge about the proposed size, techniques, or method that is not um, accessible as uh, part of the screening. So example of screening question should be, um, does, uh, does the activity involve penetration road building? Does it involve large-scale irrigation? Or does, uh, does it, um, is there any introduction of non-native crop or agroforestry species? So we have to do the screening first of the activity that we are proposing. Also, part of the screening, the activity or part of the screening is um, categorizing the risk. Um, yeah, categorizing the risk. So does it have any, um, is the risk low or is the risk very high or it's moderately 
uh, high or unknown risk. So if it's a very um, low risk, definitely the AA process ends or maybe it will not go to, um, to the phase two of the full AA study. If it has a very high risk, then therefore we need to do a full AA study. If it is unknown or if the, re the risk is unknown or moderate, uh, we will do a preliminary assessment. So the outcome of the screening um, process determines the next step in the EIA process. So of course, um, during the screening activity, um, each donor, uh, donor agency, <coughs> excuse me, and national EIA law has its own, <coughs> excuse me, has its own um, set of screening questions. Um, in which um, later on, um, we will be focusing our, our discussions on the Philippine settings when it comes to EAA. And at the same time, screening is the topic of an, um, um, in, uh, actually, um, on, not on the next module, but on the next chapter of our activity, we will actually discuss more on the screening part. All right, so let's go now to the um, next phase, which is the prelim preliminary assessment. So again, um, conduct a preliminary assessment. Um, um, on some cases, we can do a rapid or certified EIA study um, using simple tools like IEE. Um, but um, on um, um, on a moderate or um, a known risk, then therefore we really have to conduct the preliminary assessment. Actually, almost all study uh, preliminary assessment is very needed before exactly doing um, the activity or the proposed study. Just like um, when we do our thesis, um, most of the time, our panel members or our test advisors would require us to do a preliminary study or a pre preliminary assessment. So the purpose of the preliminary assessment is to provide documentation and analysis that, number one, allows us to prepare or determine um, whether or not significant adverse impacts are likely or not. At the same time, it allows the reviewer, um, in which our reviewer is in the AIA process, in the real EIA process, our reviewer is the DNR EMP. So, allows the reviewer to agree or disagree with the prepared uh, determinations. And of course, it sets out um, mitigation and monitoring for adverse impacts. So on the preliminary assessment, we can already identify what are the major risks um, or the major impacts. And at the same time, on the preliminary assessment, we can already input as to what will be our uh, mitigating or monitoring um, design or monitoring activities as to the adverse impacts of the study. That is how important our preliminary assessment. So um, typically, prelim preliminary assessment outlines is, you know, we have the background, or uh, which will consist of our development objective and list of uh, activities. And of course, we also have our description of the baseline situation. And um, we also have our evaluation of potential environmental impacts. Um, and then we have our mitigation and monitoring. And of course, the recommended findings. These are the five major um, components of our typical preliminary assessment outline. So. Of course, for each activity, it covers uh, preliminary assessment and um, possibly has three possible findings. Like, for example, the project is very unlikely to have a significant adverse impacts. So therefore, EIA process ends. Um, with specified mitigation and monitoring, so the project is unlikely to have um, significant adverse impacts. And if the project is, um, is likely to have a significant adverse impacts, then therefore, um, we will proceed with the full EIA um, study, which is uh, required if there is a significant adverse impacts um, to our proposed activity or proposed project.